Year 10 Indices, Lesson 1. So let's recap some of the work that you have seen previously. You all know how to evaluate something like 3 squared. You know that this means 3 multiplied by 3, which gives you an answer of 9. Similarly, if I asked you to work out what 2 to the power of 3 was, you would work out 2 multiplied by 2 multiplied by 2, or 2 cubed, which gives you an answer of 8. If I asked you to work out 2 to the power of 4, you would work out 2 multiplied by 2 multiplied by 2 multiplied by 2, which gives you an answer of 16. So we can simplify numerical calculations involving powers. We've also seen, for instance, if I asked you to work out what x multiplied by x multiplied by x multiplied by x multiplied by x was, you would be able to write that as x to the power of 5. So let's think about the different parts of this. This part here, this is what we call the base. And in this case, the base is x. This part here, the 5, is what we call the index. And together, we have the power, which in this case is x to the power of 5. Now, the plural of index is indices. And that's why this topic is called indices. It means that we'll be doing some work recapping ideas involving powers. So last year, you will have looked at some of the laws of indices, starting with the multiplication of terms involving indices. So let's look at an example, see if we can remind ourselves of this. If I asked you to work out 2 to the power of 3, multiplied by 2 to the power of 5, would you know how to simplify this? Now, some of you may think, well, actually, can we write it all out? So 2 cubed is 2 multiplied by 2 multiplied by 2. 2 to the power of 5 is, of course, 2 multiplied by 2 multiplied by 2 multiplied by 2 multiplied by 2. Again, we need to do that five times. So if we perform this calculation, let's count up how many twos there are. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It gives us an answer of two to the power of eight, which of course, as you will remember, is what we get if we add these two indices here. Three plus five gives us an answer of eight. So we know that if you have x raised to the power a, so x could be any number, a can be any number as well, and we multiply that by x to the power of b, then overall we add the indices. So this will give us x to the power of a plus b. And that is one of the rules of indices that you learned about last year. Hopefully, this rings a few bells. Now, this only works if the bases are the same. So you must have the same base here for this rule to work. And in fact, you can see in the answer, you end up with the same base again. But of course, it's the indices that are added here. So let's look at a few examples. Supposing we had 5 to the power of 7 multiplied by 5 to the power of 12. Well, this would give us 5 to the power of 19. What about if we had x to the power of 6 multiplied by x to the power of 15? That would give us x to the power of 21. What about if we had 7 to the power of 4 multiplied by 7 to the power of negative 6. 
So the answer is going to be 7 to a power, and that power we can work out, that index we can work out, by adding together 4 and negative 6, which of course gives us negative 2. Some of you may remember from last year what negative powers mean, what negative indices mean. We will talk about that in due course. Let's do a few more examples. What if we had 2x squared multiplied by 3x to the power of 4? Well, we have a 2 multiplied by a 3 here, if we look at the multiplies or the coefficients as we sometimes call them. 2 multiplied by 3 simply gives us a 6. And then, of course, we have to make sure we deal with x to the 2 multiplied by x to the 4, which gives us x to the power of 6. So we end up with 6x to the power of 6. Let's try another one. So we have 3p to the power of 5 multiplied by 7p to the power of 6. 3 multiplied by the 7 gives us 21. And then p to the 5 multiplied by p to the 6 gives us p to the power of 11. Let's try one last example. This time I've got 4. a to the power of 3 b to the power of 2 multiplied by 5 a b to the power of 7. So this time we have to think about all the parts of this. 4 multiplied by 5 gives us 20 as a starting point. a cubed multiplied by a, well, we can't see it, but we could write in an invisible power of 1 here. That gives us a to the power of 4. And then to finish off, we have b squared multiplied by b to the power of 7, which gives us b to the power of 9. Don't forget to add the indices. So you're going to have a go at these practice questions. Pause the video, have a go at the questions, and then check your answers afterwards. So let's have a look at the answers. So first question, x squared multiplied by x to the power of 5. Nice and simple, x to the power of 7, adding our indices. Number 2, 2 to the power of 7 multiplied by 2 to the power of 8 is 2 to the power of 15. Question 3, 3 to the 5 multiplied by 3 to the 5. Again, add the indices. We have 3 to the power of 10. Now, some negative numbers start appearing. We've got to be careful here with our negative number addition. 4 to the 5 multiplied by 4 to the negative 2 will give us an answer of 4 cubed. x to the negative 3 multiplied by x to the 12 gives us x to the power of 9 y to the negative 7 multiplied by y to the negative 4 will give us y to the negative 11. And then to finish this off, question 7, the 6 multiplied by the 3 will give us 18. And then x squared multiplied by x to the power of 5 will, in fact, we've already seen that question up here, gives us x to the power of 7. Now, were you caught out by the last question? Notice the bases are different. We have 2 to the power of 3 multiplied by 3 to the power of 2, which is very different to all of the previous questions in which the base was always the same. So this time, to work this out, we have to actually evaluate each part separately. 2 cubed gives us an answer of 8. 3 squared gives us an answer of 9. 8 multiplied by 9 is 72, and that's how we evaluate this particular example. Now, one thing we haven't looked at, and we'll add this as an additional example, is what would happen if we had 2 cubed multiplied by 2 to the 5 multiplied by 2 to the power of 7. So three terms multiplied together, all with the same base. Well, you simply add 
all of the indices together. So you end up with an answer of 2 to the power of 15, like so. So let's now see what we remember about the division of terms involving powers. So let's start with an example and see what we can remember. Let's see if we can remember how to simplify something like 2 to the power of 6 divided by 2 squared. Now, we can write out both of these calculations. So 2 to the power of 6 need to multiply 2 by itself, 6 times like this, and that's being divided by 2 squared, which is 2 multiplied by 2. Now, we can cancel out, like this, which leaves us with 2 multiplied by 2 multiplied by 2 multiplied by 2 in the denominator, we just have 1, seeing as we divided by both the 2's there. So of course, this could be written as 2 to the power of 4. And hopefully you will remember this from previous years, the connection here. 2 to the 6 divided by 2 to the 2 gives you an answer of 2 to the power of 4. So would you be able to simplify x raised to the power of a divided by, we'll write in a division sign for clarity, x to the power of b. See if you could write down what you think the answer to this would be. Yes, it's x to the power of a subtract b. And this is another rule you will have learnt about previously. So when you have the same base, you can see that here and in the answer, and you are raising to a power a and a power b, but there is a division involved, you subtract the indices. Let's have a look at a few examples. Let's suppose we have... 3 to the power of 9 divided by 3 to the power of 2. That will give us 3 to the power of 7, subtracting 2 from 9. What if we have 5 to the power of 12 divided by 5 to the power of 4? Careful, it's going to be 5 to the power of 8. There might be a real temptation here to try and divide 12 by 4, but that's not what happens. You need to do 12 take away what if we have x to the power of 8 divided by x to the power of 2? Again, subtract powers, subtract indices, and you have x to the power of 6. Let's do two last examples. So number 4, we've got a to the power of 3 divided by a to the power of 5. Now, 3 take away 5 is negative 2. We'll end up with a to the negative 2. And again, we'll be looking at negative indices and what they mean in a little bit more detail later on. Now, let's try another example. 5 to the power of 2 divided by 5 to the power of negative 2. Well, 2 subtract negative 2, think about what's happening with the indices, 2 subtract negative 2 gives us an overall answer of 4. One last example to complete this, let's say we have 30x to the power of 10 divided by 6x to the power of 10. Two. Look at the 30 and the 6. Think about what you did last time. 30 divided by 6 gives us an answer of 5. x to the power of 10 divided by x to the power of 2. You know you need to subtract the indices. It's 5x to the power of 8. 10 take away 2 is 8. So you're going to have a go at these practice questions yourself. Pause the video, try the questions and then check your answers afterwards. So question number one, x to the 10 divided by x to the 2, x to the power of 8. Number two, 5 to the 7 divided by 5 squared, 5 to the power of 5. Number three, 6 to the 8 divided by 6 squared, 6 to the power of 6. 
Number four, three squared divided by three to the power of nine, three to the negative seven. Question five, three to the five divided by three to the negative two is going to be three to the power of seven. Think about it, you're doing five minus minus two here. Question six, three to the negative four divided by three to the power of eight. So we have three to the power of negative 12. Negative four minus eight is negative 12. Number seven, three to the power of negative 10 divided by three to the power of negative six. You are doing negative 10, subtract negative six. So this will give you negative 10 add six. So that is three to the negative four. Question eight will give you x to the power of four, because you have to do negative five subtract negative nine, which becomes negative five add nine. Question nine, x to the 15 divided by x to the negative two, x to the power of 17. When you work out 15 subtract negative two, that's 15 add two, which is 17. Now the last question, Let's start with 12 divided by 8. Now, you might want to write the answer as 1.5 or 3 over 2. It doesn't really matter hugely. I'll write it as 1.5 for the moment. Then we have x to the power of 12 divided by x to the power of 5, which gives us x to the power of 7. Now, we're going to finish off with one last example. Think about how we would simplify something like this. y squared multiplied by y to the 7 all divided by y cubed. How would we approach that? Well, let's start with this part here, the numerator. y squared multiplied by y to the 7, y to the 9. We've then got to divide by y cubed. Be very careful. Sometimes we make silly mistakes here. y to the 9 divided by y cubed. You need to subtract your indices y to the power of 6 to finish off your simplification. So to summarise, the two laws of indices we have recapped that you have seen previously. x to the power of a multiplied by x to the power of b is x to the a add b, because you have the same base x each time. x to the power of a divided by x to the power of b is x to the power of a subtract b. Now, make sure you've made a clear note of these and the examples, because you'll be working on similar questions in your lesson next week.